performance appraisal. So a genuine performance appraisal can be extremely useful to any business if it's done properly. Uh, there's a lot of talk about talent and people being a very important component of the company, uh, human capital. But I think in most organizations, to be honest, it's more labor management and labor arbitration. And um, you do not really recognize the, the talent and bring them about in a transparent and consistent way. Uh, anecdotally, the, even the largest companies with millions of employees, hundreds of thousands of employees, uh, it can be said that 20, 20, 000, uh, 20, 30 people, 50 people are important to the eventual uh, benefit, profit of the company and its core to the core to the business. So when we look at performance appraisal, so we, it, what we are talking about is something where you want to genuinely uh, look at your talent and build them up uh, in a larger multinational or a larger corporation. In smaller companies with 150, 200, 250 people, typically uh, the top management owners, stakeholders might know everybody. And even in a slightly larger company with 500 people, uh, the second line of managers or the third line that whom the top management know, probably know them personally and you can manage that. But the moment you cross a certain threshold, perhaps a thousand people, and when you uh, mention 1,000 people plus, then you will be able to uh, use some of these more formal structures. So if you look at the structures here, we have uh, at the lowest level on the left side, labor, executive, middle management, and top management. So uh, there are different appraisal systems and models that we support. Uh, this is essentially based around a platform called Clextra, which we have. It's a large ERP++ with HR, finance, marketing, and it's also got a lot of behavioral models. So we are looking at the performance appraisal models that are available and possible in Clextra. You don't have to use all of them, but you could use one or two, or you can graduate as your maturity. That's why we call it appraisal maturity at the bottom. You can see that you might have a very low appraisal maturity, but over the years, you may build it into a much higher level of uh, transparency and performance appraisal. And it could be limited to the labor level. So at the lowest entry point least, we have what's called as a quick indices, indices. So in the quick indices, it's just we have a very simple three by three matrix. For example, uh, efficiency versus quality, for example. So efficiency could be a three by efficiency and quality could be a three by three matrix. That is low, medium and high, low, medium and high output. So if you, it's quite easy to understand that. I've, we have separate screenshots on telling you each of these models, we have separate videos and screenshots to explain that uh, when you want to get into the details. So the quick indices is very quickly all your labor, you can quickly appraise them across about eight, nine, ten parameters on this three by three matrix. Uh, another could be, for example, uh, employee satisfaction. So you could have a cup is half full uh, or your glass is half full or uh, glass is half empty. So we have about five options of that. So you think you're happy with it, then it's a five. You're not happy, it's a one. And we can do a very quick assessment of whether your labor is happy with. So you have some very simple mechanisms which can also be manually done by voice. Uh, you can automate it if you're depending on, uh, you know, you could run it on a phone which collects the data at the back end and uh, raises the dashboard up to a senior level. So that's at the quick indices. Now some of these features that I'm talking about work through in all of these things. So going from the bottom left upward, you can see that the next level of appraisal is where managers or executives then you have a standard globally accepted seven standard seven appraisal system the appraisal is done on seven parameters uh, for all the employees by a superior uh, then we have a concept called pipeline where it is for bpos and uh, i would say white collar labor in that sense you know, it's we have a number of uh, parameters on which they are quantified every month for example so in a call center, you may want to use this feature, which we call D-Pipeline. The next is an employee performance appraisal, EPA4, as we call it. On four broad categories, it has subcategories. So this model that we have is used quite extensively with many of our clients. So EPA4 is something we have as a performance appraisal. Like I said, getting into details in a separate video, uh, but this is an appraisal option. 
Then as you get into the middle management, you want to identify the leaders. So there you're starting to track the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats for the individual, for that person's team, okay. time planning of that person, how well is the time planning going, are they mentoring, sponsoring, sponsorship, uh, that means we have start building this concept of mentors and somebody who sponsors the team. So apart from a team lead and a successor number two for succession planning, we also have a sponsor for the team who is mentoring and guiding that team to success and representing that team uh, at higher levels inside the management. So we have this concept of so sponsorship and we identify that in the middle management. Here we get in much more into role appraisal is the job, the function. So apart from the role, job role, organization role that that middle manager is there. He's, uh, not only is the person being appraised on as an individual, but whether the fit of the role within the enterprise is being achieved. So this way you can, it's a benchmark for the organizational design and roles that people play. Then going forward up uh, into the top right hand corner, we have the ESAT, Employee Satisfaction Surveys, which are sort of like our com customer satisfaction surveys. So if you're following the balance scorecard, you would be using something like an employee a satisfaction survey which is uh, one aspect of the balance scorecard while well, customer satisfaction is another aspect of that so they are integrated in the way we work uh, is a little bit different uh, within Clextra so both options are available on the top right hand corner you can see talent so we want to identify genuine talent so talent EPA 10 allows us to really identify creative uh, and other aspects technical creative other uh, behavioral aspects uh, you know, failure, acceptance of failure and how they adapt to failure. So genuine talent identification, we have, we call that the EPA 10. So we identify 10 parameters which lead to the success of the organization and then track that, which leads further forward into team behavior. As you go into the top management, it's much more getting things done. So how do they handle the teams? What is the team's uh, 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 opinion of the leader so those start mattering which eventually leads up into the 180 degree 270 degree or 360 degree approach to performance appraisal on the top right corner as you see so we start getting much more into metrics and measures uh, of the team because there's no point in having numbers and measures and metrics at lower levels of labor and executive it's more output oriented but at the top we move forward into ratios and uh, what's the return on investment what's the return on capital uh, there is a certain deployment of resources, uh, hidden costs, variable costs, direct costs, indirect costs, fixed costs. So how is that uh, the monetary returns happening? So we can look at human capital also. So we look at those kind of ratios which have to be performed. On the top left-hand corner, we have the India PSC. We have done this for a few public sector companies, public sector enterprises. That's what PSC stands for, uh, including HAL, BEL. So mid-managers, performance appraisal, there is a standard format uh, twice a year that is performed for public sector employees. And we have got that also built as a model into a performance appraisal. So we have a variety of models. Uh, we also have, beyond this, we have competency mapping models. We also have um, behavioral models, which can feed into this performance appraisal system. So. Uh, from tangible on one side to intangible on the other side, from low maturity to high maturity of performance appraisal. It depends on how much time the organization is willing to spend on getting this done. And especially if you're going to work from home with this COVID uh, pandemic and going forward even post pandemic, uh, this whole thing can be done much more effectively from home remotely than uh, being in the office and doing this. So. Uh, I think there's a lot of good, great opportunities for appraisal uh, management models and the maturity to be developed in your organization with the Clickstra platform. Talk to us about it.